If there's one skill that virtually every data professional swears by, it's SQL. In this video, I'll show you how anyone can learn basic SQL in a matter of minutes. One great thing about SQL is that it's used in so many different data roles. And while it's often not the primary tool used, it's by far the most popular supporting language. In this video, we'll cover some foundational SQL concepts, including terms like relational databases, queries, and MySQL. Then we'll spend the majority of our time demonstrating the big six, which are six common keywords that you'll see again and again when writing SQL code. We'll also introduce the basics of multi-table analysis using a technique called a left join. By the end of this video, you'll know enough basics to start writing queries and exploring datasets on your own. Let's start with the basics. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. We'll break this down in just a bit, but in short, it's the language that you would use to talk to a database. So what is a database exactly? It's a place to store data in an organized way. Now imagine you have a piece of data, which is represented by this Lego piece. If you were to collect a ton of data, you would have this whole pile of Lego pieces. But that's hard to sift through, so you would have to organize it in some way, such as this. You can think of this storage system for Lego pieces as a database for data. Everything is now neatly sorted and easy to find. And just like there are many ways to organize Lego pieces, there are many ways to organize data. The most common way is to use tables that are connected to one another. These tables are also called relations, which is why you'll sometimes hear this organizational structure called a relational database. Now to interact with a relational database, you can ask queries to return the information that you want. These queries take the format, select star from my table. In English, this is saying, show me all the data within my table. Now bringing it all together, you now know each part of the SQL acronym. S stands for structured, and it refers to the highly structured way that data is stored in relational databases. Q is for query, which refers to the way that you could ask the database to return data to you. And finally, L stands for language, which refers to the SQL syntax that we'll be introducing in this video. Now that we've covered the basic terminology, let's talk about how to query a database. First, we need an editor where we can write and run our SQL code. There are all sorts of editors out there, many of which are free to use, including MySQL Workbench, which is what we'll be using for this demo. Next, we'll need some data. In this case, we'll be running this block of SQL code that creates a few tables with student data. If you'd like to follow along, you can download the code or CSV files in the description. Now that we have everything we need, let's write our first SQL query. To write SQL code, I'm specifically using MySQL Workbench, but you can use the editor of your choice. And the first thing I'm going to do is view my table. So the table that we're going to be working with today is called students. So I'm going to do a select star from students. This is saying, show me all the data within the students table. And if I click this execute button up here, that will run this query. And then you can see the data in the output down here. You can see Abby here is in the 10th grade. She has a GPA of 3.1. She does get school lunch and so on. And if we go back up here to our first SQL query, what we've done is we've selected all the columns from this student's table. And we did that by specifying a select clause and a from clause. Now this star means all columns, but we can also specify the exact columns we want to display. So for example, we can say we want to see the student name, the GPA, and whether someone gets school lunch or not. Now I'm gonna run this query again, and this time I'm gonna use a shortcut. So I'm gonna do a command enter on my Mac, and that will run that code for me. So now you can see here, this is a lot cleaner. I only see these three columns of data. So with this first query here, we've been able to display three columns of data from our students table. Now next, let's only show students who get school lunch. So you can see here that Abby and Catherine get school lunch, but Bob does not. So let's filter our data to only the rows where school lunch is equal to yes. So to do that, I am going to copy my query from up here, down here, and I'm going to add one more clause and it's called the where clause. And I'm gonna say, I only want to see the rows where school lunch is equal to yes. And I'm gonna do a command enter to run that again and now you can see that only the rows that contain yes are displayed. And the nice thing about this where clause is you can actually add on additional filters. So let's say I only want to see situations where the GPA was greater than 3.3. Now, if I run this one more time, you can see these are students who get school lunch and have a high GPA. And we were able to filter that by using our where clause. So moving on, let's try to sort the students. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this query from up here, copy it down here, 
and we are going to sort these students by their GPA. I'm going to add on an order by clause. I'm gonna say order by GPA. So if I run this again, you can see that the GPA is going from lowest to highest here. So in ascending order. Now, if I want to reverse that, I can add a descending here and that will make my GPA go from highest to lowest. So with this example, you were able to see what an order by does, which is sort your data. So at this point, we have gone through four clauses that you'll see again and again. Select from where in order by. The next two clauses that we're gonna go over are a bit more complex, but stick with me. We're gonna go through this step by step. So the next thing we're gonna do is try to look at the average GPA for each grade level. To do that, I'm going to start a fresh query. I'm gonna say select all from students again. And if I run that, here is my student data. And I want to know the average GPA for each grade level. Let's just start by looking at grade level and GPA. I see all these grade levels here and all these GPAs here. And what I want as my output is a grade level column. So 9, 10, 11, 12. And then for each grade level, I want to know the average GPA. So to do this in SQL, the first question I ask myself is what do I want each row to represent? And in this case, I want each row to represent a grade level. So what I'm gonna do here is add another clause called a group by, and I'm gonna put in grade level because that's what I want each row to represent. Now that I've specified what I want each row to look like, I'm gonna go back up to my select clause to specify which columns I want to display. So the first column I wanna display is grade level, and then the second column I want to display is not just GPA, but the average GPA for each grade level. So what I'm gonna do here is add an average function around this. And now if I run this query here, you can see now I have for each grade level, what is the average GPA? And to make this look a little bit nicer, I'm also going to sort this grade level column and I can do that by adding an order by grade level. And if I run that one more time, I get this clean output where I see for every grade level, this is the average GPA. And I was able to do that by using a group by clause. Now again, the group by clause is a bit on the tricky side, but the way I like to think about it is I'm grouping by whatever I wanna see in each row, and then I select whatever I'm grouping by along with some way that I'm aggregating the data for each group. So in this case, I used an average. You can also use other keywords like a count or a min, max, and so on. So this was an example of a group by. Now I'm gonna build on top of this group by. So I'm gonna take all this code here, paste it down here. And what I want to do now is show the grade levels with an average GPA below 3.3. So if I run our current code, you can see here, these are all the average GPAs. But what I wanna do now is only return the ones where the GPA is less than 3.3. So I only want to return these three rows here. Now the way that I'm gonna do that is by using something called the having clause. So at this point you might be thinking, why am I not just using the where clause? All I'm trying to do is filter the data here. However, in this case, I'm not just filtering my raw data, I'm filtering my group by data. And anytime you're filtering group by data, you're going to use a having clause. So right after I group my data, I can add a having clause where I filter this data by average GPA less than 3.3. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna actually make one more tweak up here. So right now, this says average GPA with these parentheses here, and down here, we also see that average GPA with parentheses. So I'm gonna rename this so that it's all lowercase with an underscore, which is a standard way to name columns in SQL. And I'm gonna delete this having temporarily. Now, if I run this, you can see that the only thing that's changed is this column name is now called average GPA. So now I'm gonna use that with my having. I'm gonna say I only want to return the rows where average GPA is less than 3.3. And if I run that, you can see I only get the three remaining rows here. So the main takeaway here is that having is a clause that allows you to filter any group by data. To summarize everything we've gone through so far, we're gonna call all these clauses we've just covered the big six. These are six keywords that you're going to be using again and again when writing SQL code. Remember, select lets you choose which columns to display, from allows you to choose which tables you're looking at, where allows you to filter your data, group by allows you to group rows of data within your table and aggregate them in some way, 
Having allows you to filter your group by data. And then finally, order by allows you to sort your data. So one interesting thing about SQL is when you're writing your SQL queries, your clauses always have to be in this order. Now you don't have to include all the clauses in each one of your SQL queries, but whatever you do include has to be in this order. So let's say we just wanted to view all the data in our table and sort that data. We would use select from and order by specifically in that order to get the output we're looking for. Now that you've been introduced to the big six, which are the keywords you're gonna be using in the majority of your SQL queries, I just wanna introduce a few more SQL concepts to round out this intro video. So first, I want to introduce three keywords that are used very often outside of the big six. So I'm gonna use these to modify some of our existing queries. Let's start with limit. If we scroll all the way back up to the top, if I run this first query where we viewed our table, you can see that a lot of rows of data were returned. But let's say we didn't wanna see all the rows of data. We want to limit our results. So what I can do is add on a limit keyword here, and I'm just gonna limit our output to five rows. So now if I run that, you can see I just get five rows of data here. So that is the limit keyword. Next, I'd like to introduce count. And to do that, I'm going to run this second query. So if you remember from before, with this second query, what we did is we looked at students who received school lunch and also have a high GPA. Now let's say we didn't wanna see all the information in the output here, and we just wanted to see the number of students who meet both requirements here. What we can do is a count star, and I'm just going to comment everything to the right here, so now only this code here on the left is gonna run. Now if I run this code, you can see count star counts the number of rows in that output, and now this output is telling me that four students receive a school lunch and also have a high GPA. And that's the power of count. And finally, I want to show you how the distinct keyword works. So to do that, we're gonna go back to this query here where we use an order by. And if I run that one more time, you can see in this case, I'm ordering my GPAs descending. Now what I'm gonna do is modify this query so we're only looking at GPA. So let's delete all these other columns up here. So I'm only looking at GPA and I don't wanna filter the data at all. So I'm gonna delete that. Now, if I run this query here, you can see that I have all the GPA values descending. And some of these values are repeats. So let's say I wanted to only look at the unique GPA values. To do that, I can add an extra keyword up here. So I'm gonna add a distinct keyword up here. And if I run this query here, I no longer have those repeats or those duplicates, and I'm left with just the unique GPA values. So scrolling down to the bottom again, the keywords that we just covered were limit, count, and distinct, and these are really commonly used in addition to the big six that you see up here. Now the last concept that I wanna cover is a more intermediate topic, and it's something called a join. So what a join allows you to do is work with multiple tables. So far, we've only worked with one table, the students table. So let me just show you all the data in the students table one more time. And you can see here's the students table that we've become really familiar with. Now, in addition to a students table, we also have a student grades table. So if we take a look at that, you can see we have some different information here. We can see that for this semester, for this class, this particular student got this grade here. And this is a much larger table here. What you'll notice is that these two tables are connected by a student ID. So in this student grades table here, you can see this column has student ID. And then if I go back to the students table here, you can see that our very first column, the ID column also had a student ID. So what we're gonna do here is join together these two tables so that we can show the final grades for each student. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start with a select star from and up to this point, we've only been working with one table, the students table. And now we're gonna add in the student grades information as well. So I'm gonna do a left join student grades, and that's going to combine all the data in the students table with the student grades table. And whenever you're doing a join, you have to specify what columns those two tables have in common. And that's what you're gonna join the two tables on. So in this case, we have our students table with the ID column, and that's going to match the student grades table with the student ID column. So I'm gonna add a semicolon at the end and run this code here. And you can see in our output that we have a ton of information now. 
We have all the students, all their detailed info, as well as their grades. Now this is a lot of information, so I'm just going to select a few columns. I'm going to select from the students table, the ID column, and then also from the students table, the student name, and then from the student grades table, I'm going to select the class name and the final grade. So I'm gonna do class name and then student grades, final grade. And if I run that code here, you can see this much cleaner table where I have for each student, the grade they got in all their classes that semester. And I was able to do this by joining these two tables. And specifically, I use something called a left join here, which will keep all the student information from this left table. Now, this is just an introduction to joins. There's so much more you can do with joins, including making this code cleaner, using different types of joins and so on. But the main takeaways that I want you to leave with here are these big six clauses, along with these keywords down here. And those are the basic SQL concepts you need to know to start reading and writing SQL queries on your own. So there you have it. In just a short amount of time, we've covered basic SQL terminology, the big six keywords, table joins, and more. Now that you've gotten a taste of the basics, I hope you're excited to practice writing more SQL queries on your own. You can start right away with our restaurant orders analysis guided project, which includes a dozen real world tasks with expert led solution walkthroughs. And if you'd like to dive deeper, check out our self-paced courses, guided projects, and portfolio showcase at Maven Analytics and create your own personalized learning plan for free. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this. See you in the next one.